But when you're growing food in a small space and some times where people are looking for some food security, you push the stinking lemons. You can grow what you can, don't waste your space, and test those lemons. Because boxes are made to be busted out of and I'm gonna live outside that dang box. Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason. It's a hot, muggy <laughs> Saturday afternoon and uh, we got a lot going on this weekend. Uh, we're, going, we're not going to show you everything, but we're going to try to create some kind of content throughout, throughout all of it. Um, Angela's inside canning some tomatoes. We uh, picked about 19 to 22 tomatoes. I think it's 22 tomatoes. She's canning 19 of them today. Beautiful harvest. And while she's doing that, I got some other work to do outside. Um, we got some onions to pull up, some some uh, beans to replant, try to get some more bush beans in. So we're going to do a lot of things here. Uh, try to try get you a little bit of a vlog style video to go through this whole mess so we can just show you what all we're doing. First of all, I do want to show you this. This is kind of crazy looking. We have these beets over here that beets might be harvested this weekend as well, sometime or another. They probably need to be soon. But I want to show you this beet. It's kind of funny looking. The beets are part of the, the, the productive chaos over here. <laughs> but I want to show you this one right here. This is kind of crazy looking. This beet has gotten really, really, really fat, huge. It's kind of funny looking. That's a seed that I just accidentally dropped in a, one of these holes. That seed was totally an accident. I just I dropped it while I was planting the, the actual beets over here, and it happened to create something. We may have to get that bug, that booger, before he uh, splits or cracks on us. I know he's kind of deformed looking, but but he'll eat pretty good. Probably make some good pickled beets. Some of these onions we gotta pull up. They stayed. Some of these stayed little, but they're gonna they're gonna be okay. Got weeds to get out of there. But yeah, they stayed small. They're still gonna eat just fine. Yeah, they're they're good. This onion's delicious. Hmm, something got a hold of that one. I don't know what happened there. That uh, this onion is the uh, is what's called red zeppelin. Came from um, gurneys.com. They. They give, they give you a good deal on a lot of onion slips, but as I pick some more of these, sorry, but uh, they give you a good deal on a lot of on a, a lot of onion plants when you buy them, and we've had eh, somewhat success with them. They're doing okay. They're doing good. I'm, I'm happy to have onions that we've grew ourselves, but this uh, this onion is called red zeppelin, and it's delicious. I'm not an onion eater. Okay, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not I'm not a fan of of onions like some people are. I mean, Angela Angela we, Angela we use them, and uh. And cook, and then she'll she'll do stuff with them. I'm not a big raw onion eater necessarily, but like this onion right here, we grew it last year for the first time, and, and Angela had it kind of diced up sitting out. I think she's gonna make salsa. I think when she was canning salsa last year, she had it sitting out, and I just kind of took a bite of it. I was like, okay, we grew this ourselves. I'm gonna take a bite. So I picked up some of the pieces she, she had diced up, and it was amazing. Such an amazing flavor. I said, okay, we're growing this thing all the time. Huh, this is a big one. Not bad looking, but uh, he he uh. But this thing is so delicious. I, I was like, okay, we're not going without growing these onions again. It's so good. All right, here's the onions I pulled up. Uh, some of them big, some of them little, just like all of us. You know, some of them are really nice. These are good onions though. This is nothing to be disappointed in by no means at all. Nice onions. Now there's a few that are, that are left, and how you know they're ready, the, the tops will break over. All right, so this is kind of soft and broken over. A lot of these are kind of wet too right now because we had a bunch of rain earlier. The rain did kind of put us behind earlier, but it did keep me from watering, so that kind of saved me some time as well. Uh, it gives me opportunity to kind of rest while it was raining, but then come out here and get to work on pull, on harvesting and replanting and cleaning things up because now I got to get these weeds out of here too that were kind of entangled around the onions, so you kind of had to wait on the onions to finish up before you pull the weeds because the weeds would pull up the onion with it. I still have a few onions left that we didn't we couldn't pull because they're not ready yet. This one right here, he's growing well, and I don't believe he's quite ready yet. That's the neck's still a little firm, as well as this one. Top's still doing good. This one as well. And nice onions too. Really good onions. Nice bit of onions here and here. Over here. Look really good. Oh, also peep these beautiful tomato plants that are going to be going in the ground as soon as we can get some more things cleared out of the garden. Okay, I've got these beds weeded. Just this little section and uh, I'm getting ready to put my soil amendments in. I'm just gonna plant from this right here over to here, just a small section. I'm probably gonna put one, maybe two seeds, probably just one seed 
and each of these holes up to this point right here because these squashes over here are, are eventually going to grow up and kind of fall over and they'll just smother out these these other spots here so i'm not going to worry about them going to use worm castings and an organic granular fertilizer in this bag while beans don't need a ton of fertilizing they do need some help especially if you've grown something in in your spot already that you're gonna and you're gonna replant it you're gonna want to put some more fertilizer in there make sure your plants can grow as strong and healthy as possible okay i'm gonna show you what i did with these beans it's it's a little different but i think it might work like i said i only put one bean seed in each one of these holes just one individual plant see how it goes I and mean, obviously it's going to create more better spacing for each plant and so maybe it's going to work out a little better but up here i just did like close staggered rows so there's five there's only five bean seeds in each row okay i want to show you it's hard to see because they're white and there's paralyte in here too so it's hard to really tell but there's beans here so there's five bean seeds in each row spaced fairly good you know a few inches between each one and then like two inches over I did a staggered row so what you're gonna see is a bean seed here bean seed here here it's gonna be staggered rows essentially so there's never two seeds beside each other but there is diagonal distance and spatial distance here so you see here's the next row right there and then there's bean here bean here bean here so there's a, a two or three inches between each bean seed I did that all the way down through there as I pull the camera back, you can see a little better probably. And I'll just go through and push them in with my fingers and cover and cover them in like that. And some of y'all are gonna say, hey, it's too late in the year. You put them a little, maybe a little too close together. You, you don't know what you're doing. Look, I'm well aware that I'm pushing the limits. But when you're growing food in a small space and some times where people are looking for some food security, you push the stinking limits. You can grow what you can, don't waste your space, and test those limits. Because boxes are maybe busted out of and i'm gonna live outside that dang box now if you've watched this a lot this year you're gonna say jason you guys have planted a lot of bean seeds don't you have enough the answer is no i can't have enough green beans but <laughs> but you also if you've watched this enough you're gonna say oh that's right you've had a lot of rabbit issues right yes we've had rabbits um long story short there is a there's a female rabbit who's had three litters of rabbits in our backyard this year and those rabbits have do what rabbits do which is eat eat green stuff eat green bean leaves right so they've, they've one rabbit in particular um has ate a lot of our green beans just to plant some cells as they've come up and so we've we've had a lot of issues with that uh well, so we're going to keep planting green beans in random places to try to ensure we get enough green beans because hey i like to eat green beans and on another note those were haas seeds okay we um haas seeds does a really cool thing if you buy seeds in bulk which but which uh, blue lake bush beans which is what we got there you can buy them in bulk if you buy a pound they send them in this resealable mylar bag um it's much cheaper much more financially efficient to buy by the pound and um so we bought a pound of seeds i mean seeds will stay good for a while heck you can buy 50 pounds of seeds there which is not a bad idea if you want to grow them commercially hey let's see what angela k is up to though what are you doing in here making peach jam peach jam cool yeah. Good looking stuff. Already canned tomatoes. For those of you who are not aware, we buy like, well, this year we bought 75 pounds of peaches from the peach truck. And the peach truck is a thing. Comes from comes from Georgia. Uh, the company's based in Tennessee now, but they drive up through areas like this and they uh, deliver peaches. So we pre-bought them. Delicious Georgia peaches. We picked them up last week. And now part of, part of them are getting ready to be worked up. And so we're gonna make some peach jam some other things and we'll have some videos out there about some of the things we've made with it we do have a peach jam video already we did last year if you want to go check it out we might have a i card to it somewhere up here beside us but um so we have several things we're going to do we won't film every bit of it and angela did can some tomatoes already this morning beautiful jars of tomatoes uh angela picked about about 22 tomatoes this morning i think is what i said earlier we, we 19 of them are ready we are kind of doing something different for people we're going through and I'm trying to track how many tomatoes we pick on what day, how much they weigh, uh, what varieties they are. So we can have stuff for content so you guys will know, but also for our own benefit that we'll know exactly what tomatoes did best, how long it took them, how much we actually grew, how much we harvested. Um, heck, I don't know, that was eight pounds of tomatoes this morning, wasn't it? Yes. Eight pounds, some, eight pounds of tomatoes. 
And also maybe we'll know, hey, eight pounds of tomatoes creates six pint jars, maybe. You know, something of that nature. But more information, more data, essentially, more data analysis for our benefit, for content sake, and for everybody else's benefit as well. Okay, we're a couple days later. And I'm over here on the other on the other side of the yard, inside the the in-ground garden slash raised beds where I got these green beans planted. We had contender bush beans in these two raised beds. And you know what? They're getting kind of, they're waning. And we have still probably 70 days of growing left. Maybe 75. Uh, we're trying to get in some more uh, green beans in these two beds. So this is what we're doing. We're working, out, rip, working on ripping out all the, uh, all the bean plants. And we're going to pick off what's left. They're still good. Obviously, some like this are going to seed. But like this one, it's still good. So we're gonna pick them as we as we pull the plants up. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough that you don't want to waste. And we've got this so far. We're gonna take these, and when we're done with picking them, we'll wash them up, break them, and just add them to our bags of uh, beans in the freezer, like we've shown you before that we do. But first, before I continue on this, it's about time to eat, y'all. This little squash, he's trash. Get him out of there. But this one, he's ready to eat. So is this one. He is big, but he's ready. Oh, this mater needs to go. He's split. Oh, I'm not sure he's really good or not. Let's see if we can get anything on him. Maybe this mater here is ready to go. I gotta go and see if Angela K needs any more or not. She's the chef, so let's go ask her what, she, what else she needs. Well, heck, I need to go. She told me what she needed uh, before I came out here. She needs some Cubanel peppers too. Here's the little one. He's ready. Pop this one's ready. You know they're ready when they, if you pick them all the way back like this, pull them all the way back against the stem, and they pop off, then they're ready. And this guy right here wouldn't get him out. There we go. With these three peppers. Again, the pepper plants have stayed small this year. I, we fertilized and watered them really well. I do believe it's from one of them tunneling little um, moles. We've had moles and voles run through our ground like crazy. A ton on up the sides all through here and everywhere else. I think it's really affected squash plants Obviously the melons on the other side of the yards, which we've well documented And I really think it's really hurt these peppers because I've seen some of the peppers moving <laughs> Like something's underneath them, but yet there's nobody touching them So I'm assuming that something's under there tunneling under them and probably just Sheared off the, the roots and I've really done some damage to them put the plants into shock. Let's go see if this is enough All right, is this enough? Is yep. this, this one gonna be okay? That's fine. You sure? Yep, that's fine. Cause he looked a little funky right here. He's good. You all right? Yeah. All righty. All right, we're back inside. I've got the beds cleaned out. I don't have them replanted yet, but hey, it's time to eat. So this is what Angela K has put out for us. And this is what she created over some rice or squash, the peppers, tomatoes, and the beans we got. Pretty solid. All right, we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to eat, and I'm gonna get me some sweet tea. I'm gonna be on our way. But hey, if you guys want to see a video on this, a recipe video on what Angela made here tonight. Uh, just let us know in the comments below. Next time we pick some squash and make this, we'll be sure to film it for you, okay? But for now, we're wrapping this sucker up. So thank y'all so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason, that's Angela Kay, Art of Creation Homestead. We love y'all, God bless you, and goodbye.